everybody. Welcome back to Dory to Discovery, the podcast of the Whitby Public Library. This month we went a little bit different. We got our coworkers to send us some book recommendations and we um, basically picked at random what we were going to read this month. So it's kind of a blind date with a book situation. Um, so we each picked something from this list. I believe we had 21 recommendations total, which I will read out at the end of the podcast. Uh, yeah, who would like to start? Kate, do you want to start? I can start. Yeah. So um, the book that was chosen for me slash I picked was um, The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. So this book, okay, if you like true crime and you like ghosts, basically, if you like all seasons of BuzzFeed Unsolved, you will love this book. You will love this book. It's um, basically the story is it's a dual story, which I love. So it's um, Viv in 1982 and Carly in 2017. And they and so Viv is Carly's aunt who has been missing since 1982. Um, And so the story is that Viv moves to Fell in upstate New York. Um, She's trying to escape her family. She was supposed to be she was trying to escaped to New York City um, but she ended up in upstate New York and just kind of stayed in fell because she got a job as the uh, night clerk at the Sundown Motel Um, and she realizes that the Sundown Motel is haunted so there are different signs that tell her it's haunted she get like gets a whiff of cigarette smoke while she's at the front desk doors will like just slam open all the time like doors will just be like hanging open all in the top um level of the motel um there's like a the swimming pool is all closed down because there was a child that died in the swimming pool and she sees the ghost of a woman in like a flowery dress that looks like it's from the 1970s so like super haunted um and then she goes missing and then the second story is Carly her niece who is obsessed with true crime and obsessed with finding out what happened to her aunt. So she also goes to Fell and becomes the night clerk at Sundown Motel to figure out what happened. And so then the stories are kind of like going together as they each discover more. So it actually, the book starts with Viv disappearing. Um, and then it goes back and tells like Viv's story as she moves to Fell. And, and so then it's telling their stories together and it's not just that the Sundown Motel is haunted. It's also that Fell is kind of haunted because there is a serial killer in Fell um, in, the, in the late 70s, 1980s um, that no one believes is a serial killer. Um, they just think it's like random events that have happened to dis- different women. So there was just one, um, one woman who was a mother and you know, like her body was found. And then there was um, one girl in high school who was like out running and her body was found. And like, so there were four women in total, I believe, that went missing or their bodies were found. Um, and it does get quite graphic. Um, for people who aren't into that, I know it was a bit of a deterrent for me because I am a person who likes um, BuzzFeed Unsolved Supernatural. I'm less of a true crime gal because it like that kind of stuff, reading about things that happen to women, like that just, it gets right to me. And like, I, so reading this was sometimes, it was really hard to read, but it was a really excellent book. And like the story was really, really good. And I love the way the ghost stories kind of complemented the true crime and like they went it it was just you know it it was very good it was gritty it was dark it was chilling like I got chills um and it was just two really cool women being detectives and finding things out for themselves because no one else was gonna do it so good book yeah it's been on my list for a while actually so Mm -hmm. do you find out what happened to the aunt like yes actually you do Okay. You That's do. Like, you know. yes. I just don't want any cliffhangers. I'm not mm, about that. Yeah. No, there. So everything is resolved at the end. Um, and what I love too is that both Viv and Carly do solve like the serial killer. Like they they figure out who the serial killer is on their own. Um, and then it's eventually revealed. So it's 
it's, it's very satisfying. It's a very satisfying book. I was having trouble with it. Like I said, because of the, like Mm -hmm. some of the details. Um, but then like the last hundred pages or something, I just sat down and read it because I was just like, I could not put it down. Maybe like the last half of the book, honestly, I was just like, I couldn't put it down. It was really, really good. I'm so intrigued by like the ghost, ghost. (laughs) I know that's what I really like that too like that I I'm not always here for like the the true crime like thriller aspect but like mm-hmm. if there's ghosts yeah read it <laughs> it reminds me of American Horror Story Hotel which is mm-hmm. like a similar kind of like vibe and that there's ghosts but then there's also serial killers mm-hmm. and I mean, I'm more of a true crime gal myself like mm-hmm. I could reach for a true crime before I would reach for a ghost story I think because like I always adore reading like the nonfiction stuff upstairs um, and getting all like the gritty details but especially when it's women sometimes like it's hard it's really mm-hmm. hard because obviously mm-hmm. it gets kind of personal and you're like this is our lives as women um, yeah. But I'm not like that. Sounds like such an interesting story, and I love mm-hmm. when it's a parallel story. <gasps> Me too. I always love dual stories, like dual narrators. I love that. It's, it's even when it's um, or especially when it's like two different time periods too. It's just like mm-hmm. such a cool way of telling a story. Do we know so who good. recommended that one? Uh, I believe that one came from Jess. Jess, nice. Thank you, Jess. Yes. Thank you, Jess. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. <laughs> so, Kylie, what did you read? I read uh, this here. We don't have our physical copy yet, so I just printed it. But I read A Marvelous Light by Freya Marsk. This book was fabulous. Um, I read it, um, the ebook and the audiobook. We, we have those now. Um, so I read both. Um, it was so good. Um, so it's historical fiction, fantasy, romance, and a mystery, all rolled into one fantastic it takes place in edwardian england but there's like a magical secret society that lives in edwardian england um so basically main character robin um shows up to work one day to discover that he has been transferred to a new department of the home office um so he shows up to work and another man walks in edwin with a notebook and a pen but the pen is writing the notes without edwin touching it um, so it's just magically writing his notes and Robin is just completely stunned um, and has no idea what's happening. And um, Edwin's like, oh, sorry, you didn't know about magic. You're the magical liaison to this secret society of magicians in London, um, which Robin had no idea about because Robin is not a magician. So basically, Robin is ready to quit his job. Um, and get out of this weird magical secret society when he is attacked and threatened by a group who are trying to find a magical artifact left behind by Robin's predecessor. So basically they think he knows where it is because he has the job now. (laughs) Robin has no idea where it is, but now he's cursed um, and terrified. And so he goes to Edwin um, for help and it basically turns into the two of them trying to break the curse, trying to find this magical artifact before all of these um, enemy magicians can find it and use it for evil. Also, a love story because they start falling for each other. It's fully enemies to lovers. Um, They do not like each other at first. Um, They're both very like sarcastic (laughs) with each other, which was hilarious. It was such like a dry humor book. It was really funny. But yeah, it was so much fun. All, all of the characters were just extremely sarcastic. You know, you get a magical Edwardian house party. There was a little bit of everything. It was so much fun. Audiobook also great. The narrators were great too. That sounds so good. It was so much fun. It seems like an interesting twist on magic too. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I feel like with magic, you can kind of get like, it's so easy to be anything, but sometimes I find it hard to find like unique ideas of magic. Yeah, yeah, the way that magic works in this world, it's kind of like playing like cat's cradle, but there's no string. The magic is the string, which is kind of confusing to explain it that way. But once you read about it, it's like, oh, I get it. Yeah, it's like magic in this world is like strings of light that Mm -hmm. you manipulate. It's it's really quite cool. That's really cool. uh, You can like imbue like items with the magic light 
Um, it's it's really quite cool. It's a really fun like magical concept, a really fun world because now they have all their like secret magical places. It's very cool. It also kind of gives me mag- the magician vibes. I don't know if you guys do you guys read the magician. It's by Love Grossman, kind of like a play on Narnia and Harry Potter. So like the author is a millennial and he grew up with both of them, um, and they are I believe they're like grad students what so they get out of like their typical schooling but you have to be like very 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 intelligent like top of the line kind of intelligent because similar to like the string of light like all its hand movements like you have to like move your hands in like specific ways to like make the magic happen um if you're it's if you know both narnia or like you know anything in that realm and harry potter to read it is funny because he makes jokes throughout it so like the basic concept is that uh, Quentin, the main character, um, is brought in and he gets accepted into the school. Um, and so he ends up going there. Um, and his best friend, who didn't actually get accepted, but her mind wasn't fully wiped, like kind of loses it a little bit because she finds out about magic in the real world. Anyways, that's a whole other story. But um, so he grew up reading all about this place. And I cannot for life me remember what the place is called, but it's basically Narnia. Um, and then he finds out that it's a real place. It's actually somewhere he can go. And he ends up going to this like Narnia and like saving it. Um, but they make like jokes about like Harry Potter and like how they have to use wands and all. It's just, it's hilarious. But if you're looking for another kind of interesting older adult version of magic Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of the stuff that happens in it is weird and adult like I will say that it's not for kids Um, Mm -hmm. but it was fun and I think it was great for somebody like growing up with those things to then read that it's a trilogy in total Um, but yeah check those out I know we have them so what's like this one um, they've the description that I read of it said that it's like a cross between red white and royal blue which we all love and um, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which I haven't read, but I looked it up after I saw the comparison, and it's essentially like a um, like an alternate history with magic, um, which now I want to read it. So I love <laughs> Jonathan magic. Strange and Mr. Norrell too. All these like fun magical alternate histories. Like it's cool to just think of history plus magic. So yeah, right up my street. Yeah, yeah. So that was my uh, book that was chosen from this list. And do you remember who chose it? Uh, Jacqueline. That one came from Jacqueline. Of course it did. Thank you, Jacqueline. (laughs) What got the best recommendations? Yeah. What did you read? Okay, so I read. I just want to bring it up because. I have a terrible memory, as we all know. Like you've been listening to this podcast for a bit. Shelby A (laughs) has a terrible memory, and B never finishes her books. So if you're like me. Uh, you are represented here. Okay. So this is it. It's called Ray Bearer. So it's only on Hoopla right now. So you can only read it as an ebook um, or I believe as an audio book as well. The main character is a young girl named Trisari. Um, now that is her name and it's given to her technically by her father, but her mother doesn't call her that name and nobody else in the house does either. Um, they actually don't call her anything. So she doesn't actually hmm. technically have a name. Um, but you meet her very young. She's, I believe, like two or three years old when you meet her. Um, and all you know is just basically like her loneliness. So she's grown up in a house where um, the only person who ever touches her is her mother. Um, but her mother is never there. And then she grows up with all these scholars around her and she's constantly being taught and educated um, and given all these puzzles to do. Um, and they're just like, here's a puzzle, figure it out. And then if she doesn't figure it out, they're like, she's not ready. She's not ready. But she has no idea what's going on because she's a small child. But basically one night she like wanders out of her like let's say it's a castle-esque kind of building um because it is fantasy um so it kind of opens up with like oh I never thought that there would be fairies here but there are and I'm like okay oh. it's a very weird opening um and it's kind of drawn out to like her overall um life it's just it takes a little bit to kind of get to the story um anyway so she like wanders out and she ends up coming upon a djinn um and for those of you who don't know what a djinn is it's basically just um like a genie um so she runs into this djinn and he says listen I I can't tell you your story but I can show you where you can learn your story so he takes her to this tree and he says like but basically like put your palm on the ground so you find out that she can take stories not only from physical places and objects, but people as well. Um, So it's kind of harder when it comes from objects because they're objects and they have a hard time telling it. 
but basically tells her the story of how her mother came to this area, captured this djinn, um, and made him give her wishes. And one of them was a stronghold that like nobody can see, but everybody is protected in. This is where she's kept. Um, and then she's also, um, technically speaking, the second wish is the girl herself. So the djinn had a baby with her mother. So she's actually part djinn and she holds the final wish. So she is the final wish and she continues to grow up. Again, you don't really know why she is where she is or what, like what's happening, but she gets smarter and smarter. And eventually her mom comes back and she says, it's fine. It's time, finally time here. Are your two guardians. You're going to go with them and you have to do one thing for me. So she sits her down in her lap and she shows her a picture of a little boy. And she says, when you meet this little boy and he calls you his own, you will kill him. So you then find out, I know this is long roundabout. It'll take a long time. So you find out that this is the prince of the land and he, it will be the ray bearer. So he has the ray inside of him, which is basically like the lifeblood of their area. So he holds like all the power within him, but uh, he cannot be killed. He can only be killed by somebody in his inner circle, one of the 11 people who he chooses to be there. And the only way for you to become part of the inner circle is as a child to go and meet him and you basically like, you have to fall in love. Um, you become like family. So she meets him. Um, and at first you'd think like the, why is she being like held captive or whatever's going on? So you find out her mom actually used to live in the palace but she's been like banished or something. You don't really know why she's not allowed there. Um, but uh, because the little girl has a power she's able to go in and meet the prince. And because she has never been exposed to literally anything about anything about the land, um, she has no idea what's going on. And that bypasses the reason why she usually wouldn't be allowed to meet him. And of course the prince falls in love with her uh, immediately. So um, over time, she like forgets that that's what she has to do is kill him. Um, but she has to get into his inner circle and part of her knows that she doesn't want to because she doesn't want to hurt him because this is her first time also interacting with other children. Um, so basically it's like a found family-esque kind of story. Again, I did not finish it, um, but it seems just really interesting, just kind of like the Ella Enchanted like as aspect of it where she's got to, she has to do something. She doesn't want to do it. She's then going to become part of his inner circle, which is like, obviously they're ruling the land. Like, why would you want to give up that power as well? Like, so, so far it was really interesting. It's um, mostly fantasy, like sci-fi-esque, I guess more fantasy than sci-fi. It's been interesting so far and it's definitely not something that I would have picked for myself to read. And I believe Jess also recommended yes. it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's the benefit of the kind of blind date with a book thing. Mm -hmm. so you're getting something that you wouldn't necessarily pick up for yourself. And it's like, oh, yeah, I really like I'm not sure necessarily that I would have picked A Marvelous Light if I just saw it on the shelf and be like, oh, yeah, it's like cool cover, but maybe not. But it was so much fun. <laughs> See, I disagree. I feel like I'm surprised you haven't already read that one. True. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised I haven't read it. <laughs> I've yeah. never seen it before. So yeah, I mean, maybe I would have, but yeah, I'd never seen it before. So it was nice to have like a new, um, a new book. Recommendations are always fun. Uh, speaking of, we now have the list of all of the other recommendations um, that were given to us by our coworkers. So these are some Whippy Library staff picks. Basically all of the ones that we put into our draw that were not chosen by three of us because there were a lot of recommendations, so we could only pick one each. Um, so to begin, um, their first one is called The Last Watch. It is a fast paced sci-fi, which I have heard has been uh, described as kind of like the Night Watch from Game of Thrones, but like in space. Love it. So that's cool. Um, the next one is called Hannah Khan Carries On. It's a YA rom-com. Um, a Highland Promise, which is a historical Scottish romance. <laughs> yep. um, Tip to the Gunslinger, which is a historical Western romance, which I actually have started reading. It's very funny. I've never done a cowboy romance, so I'm very intrigued. It's it's like a like a cowboy rom com. Yes. Like it's very funny. Love it. I highly recommend. Um, the next one is The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek, which is historical fiction. Um, the next one is The Gunkle. Um, it's a dramedy about family and love. Heard great um, things about that one. 
I've yeah. also heard really good things. Haven't read it yet, but it I've seen it on like tons of bestseller lists and heard good things. Um, the next one is called The 100 Years of Lenny and Margot, which is a genre fiction about life and friendship. Sounds really sad based on the description mm -hmm. I read, but also sounds really good. Um, next is Vicious, which is a sci-fi fantasy with superpowers. Very fun. Um, the Firekeeper's Daughter, which is a mystery thriller with an indigenous main character. Um, An Ember in the Ashes, which is a YA fantasy with gladiator influences which is quite cool. Um, Into the Drowning Deep, sci-fi with mermaids. I'm sorry, we have a mermaid book on here? <laughs> I'm done. Sci-fi with mermaids, everyone. Um, I've also heard really good things about that one. Didn't you um, read that one, Shelby? No. <laughs> if, I, if I had read a mermaid book, do you think that you would not know about it? Well, that's what the thing, I've heard of that one. I thought you were talking to me about it. It was like back in contactless pickup days. Someone was like going on and on and on about this book. And I was like, I need to read this book into the drowning deep. It was like, was it you? Who was it? A hundred percent was not me. I remember that's the only book that is semi gotten close and Aaron lied to me. Fable. Okay. Was fable. And she was like, it's mermaids. It's not mermaids. It's not mermaids. She it's pirates. It's pirates. Yeah. So there's a mermaid book on here and I didn't get to read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the next one is Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe, which is an LGBTQ contemporary YA. And the new one, is that the new one that just came out? But that's not, that's the first one. There is a sequel to that one also that just came out recently. Yes, it's on all of our rapid shelves um, in the teen section. Uh, also, if you didn't already know this, typically our rapids are housed in whatever section they belong in minus adult general fiction and like nonfiction but you're going to find kids stuff and kids stuff and teen stuff and teen stuff so check those areas too for rapids yes um next is the secret history of the pink carnation which is an adventurous historical fiction uh the inheritance games uh which is a ya mystery thriller uh this is how you lose the time war which is an lgbt time travel sci-fi definitely not japan to recommend that <laughs> Uh, one plus one, an opposite the track love story, the Atlas Six, which is a fantasy secret society, and finally, if we were villains, which is a mystery thriller set at an elite arts college. That one looks really good. I've heard really good things of it, and apparently, it um it came up on a bunch of lists when I looked up books that were good to go with Squid Game. Um, I had a mm -hmm. library to go kit to do for an adult, and that one kept showing up. So, uh, keep an eye out for that too. Yeah. Um, also, if you are watching or listening to the podcast on the day that it releases, which is February 14th, the library is doing our own blind date with a book program that ends today. Um, so if you're listening to this on the first day um, and you want to run out to the library, we're doing that at all three locations. Um, you can basically pick up a book that you have no idea what it is um, and wait for a surprise when you get home to read it. But also interest, um, like important point, um, we are only replenishing the blind date with a book display up until today, the February 14th. So anything that isn't taken by February 14th, we're going to leave out there at least until the end of the month. So huh. even if you're listening to it a few days afterward, you might still be able to go to one, any one of our locations and pick up a blind date there and make sure to check it out with staff when you do because then you won't be spoiled for what the title is when you check it out um, but it'll just have some hints on the outside of what might be inside and I am heading it up for Brooklyn um, so if you want to come up to the Brooklyn branch it'll be my suggestions mostly it's very exciting I've got a massive cart of books that I'm about yeah. to wrap up today it's very exciting and if you miss it, um, that's okay. You can always do a library to go bundle as well. We do them for adults and you'll get um, a vast variety of stuff. The more information you put on those sheets, the better it is for us, just because then we can get a better idea of what you typically like to read. Um, even if you just tell us what you like to read and you say, I don't want anything like this, then at least then we know. Um, but that's another really great way to be surprised with what's in there. And you know what? It's actually kind of fun to do adult ones for us because typically do stuff for kids. And um, as much as kids are great, they're a lot easier to pack bags for than adults. So it's a little bit more of a challenge for us when you guys recommend them. And you can also do... What is Discover it? Reads. Discover Reads. Thank you very much. If you want just a <laughs> list 
of books and that way you aren't pressured to check them all out at once you can just kind of go down through kind of basically like what we did today we basically did a discover reads we just got people to send us in some ideas so those are always options as well if you're looking for something new and exciting to read yeah always um, fun to get something that's a little bit different than what you usually read it's um I mean, sometimes, hey, you might find out you really don't like that genre, but you might find a new genre that you love. So always fun to step out of your comfort zone a little bit and try something new. It's true. And I found this really helpful actually this year because uh, my first book of the year was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. <laughs> and I, finally, I, I know we've talked about this book a million times, but I loved that book and I was like fully sobbing when it was over and I was just like I don't even know what to read next and so then just to have someone be like read this was very helpful you know like it is nice to just have like just put the decision in somebody else's hands like you tell me what to read you know I like that it's good it was nice it's so hard to follow yeah So thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. I hope you liked our blind date with books. Make sure to check us out on all podcasting platforms. We've recently just changed over to a new host. So you can still find us on all of those same places. Also, we have it on our um, homepage as well, or not our homepage. We have a landing page, whippylibrary.ca forward slash podcast. Um, so yeah, check us out on there. Um, don't forget, if you have any questions or concerns, you can always send us an email as well. We love to hear from you guys. Um, you can always come in and see us. We're all over the place. You'll probably find us somewhere. Um, and then of course, we have the winter scavenger hunt going on right now. Every month, it's going to be a different uh, image. So now that it is February, you should be able to find hearts. Am I correct? Yes. yes, you should be able to find hearts around our library. Uh, take your little ones or yourself and go do a nice little scavenger hunt. It's super fun, nice little walk around the library. Um, and of course, we also have our winter reading challenge, which is going from January 10th until March 21st. So make sure to check in for that. Um, we've got lots of book clubs coming up as well. Make sure to check our program calendar um, on our website for that. Um, and thank you guys so much for hanging out with us and we'll see you next month. Okay. Bye, Bye everyone.